Today I want to talk to you about the 6 hour P232. It's chambered in 380. It's stainless steel. My experience with this gun is it's a great carry gun. It's uh, pretty small. It's not exactly lightweight for the size pistol that it is because it's stainless steel. It's a, much lighter than the other pistols that I carry, most of the other pistols that I carry for protection. I, I purchased this a long time ago uh, when I was in the Secret Service Uniform Division. I, I think I actually purchased it through the Secret Service. Although out of production, highly recommend the gun. Uh, has a good grip, has good ergonomics. If you have big hands like mine, you just have to watch the slide a little bit, but uh, Again, I've fired, uh, I've had the gun since the early 90s. I've probably fired uh, close to 800 rounds through it. Most of those in the last couple of years because I started carrying it more when I retired. Why would I choose this over a more modern, like a Glock or, or, or the, the um, S uh, Smith & Wesson M&P series? It's not the most modern gun out there, but it's, it's reliable. And again, it's highly accurate. The fixed barrel is, is one of the reasons I stay with this gun. Plus, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a good, you know, it's it's a good all-weather gun. It's stainless steel. It's easy to clean. It breaks down easy, and, and it's it's accurate. For me, this is what I like. I don't need the latest, greatest versions all the time, you know. Uh, hence my nine-year-old Ford truck. So, right now I have the slide locked back, and to lock the slide back, there's no external catch for that. Um, for a slide release. So you have to, it's internal, so you have to use an empty magazine and you insert it and then you can lock the slide back. And then you can remove the, mag the empty magazine if you want. It does have a decock lever right here. Uh, when the slide's forward, you want to decock the pistol. It has a decock like many six hour pistols. The six hour P232 and 380 fixed barrel. It makes it very accurate. It makes it revolver accurate as I like to say. You know, my first issued weapon from the Air Force was a Model 10 Smith & Wesson. When I started in the Secret Service Uniform Division in 1991, they issued me almost the identical pistol. I like this, uh, the fixed barrel, it makes it very accurate. When I was in the Secret Service, they used to refer to this gun as a gunfight in a phone booth. Now that's, that's a dramatization to get your attention. This is a, an excellent uh, firearm. The SIG uh, 232 holds seven rounds in the magazine and one in the chamber, that's eight rounds. Well, that's two more rounds that I carried in a revolver. I have another seven round magazine. It's 15 rounds. That's more rounds than I carried on duty at the White House when I first started working there in my revolver. So, and you can always purchase more ma magazines. When I first purchased this, some of my coworkers in the Secret Service referred to this as a pimp gun because it was very popular in the 70s and 80s movies and TV where somebody portraying, an actor portraying a pimp had a shiny gun. So it's actually uh, got a pretty good size grip for somebody like me who has an enormous hand. Once you insert the magazine, it covers almost my whole hand. It's not just about the gun, it's about the skill. Listen, no matter what it is, firearms, martial arts, boxing, whatever, any kind of skill, it's not just the tool that you use, in this case, this firearm. It's the skill and, and the practice that you have with it. I'm very comfortable with it. I'm very comfortable with the shooting with two hands, one hand. I've practiced with it in awkward positions, kneeling. I've taught myself how to, how to load it with uh, one hand. God forbid I'm injured or I'm choking somebody out with the other hand. You know, but God forbid that I was overrun in that ammunition. I, I have no problem using this gun as a, a blunt instrument to protect myself. You know, you hear people say 380 is not powerful, not powerful enough. And the truth of the matter is there's nothing wrong with 380 for protection, but over penetration is a big deal. So you want, you want somewhere between penetration and delivering that shot to the, to the target, the body, and you don't want over penetration where it passes through the body. What you want is impact that stuns somebody and shocks the nervous system. So when you're defending yourself, whether you're a civilian or a police officer, um, you're responsible for every round you fire and you have to know what your backstop is. So the reason jacket and hollow points are very popular is because they're less likely to pass through a body. When I worked at the White House, as you can imagine, that was a big deal. You know, you, you don't want to shoot the bad guy and, and then have to explain to, to the Senate subcommittee why you the bullet struck the first lady or somebody in the first family. When I was an air marshal on an airplane, again, a big deal of bullets passing through the intended target and, and, and uh, hitting somebody else in that small space or uh, rupturing the side of the plane. Rupturing the side of the plane is not as big a deal as you might think it is. That's a separate video. This is the reason we shot the bot. We want you to understand it still has the capacity to incapacitate somebody, stop them from doing something. By the fifth round, uh, chunks of cement are starting to fall out of that block. The uh, SIG 232 
Um, I carry it because it's smaller, but I ended up carrying it, using it as an off-duty uh, gun when I retired. So I refer to it as my church gun. And when I go to church, I do carry a pistol. Now, for you, those of you who are appalled at that, I will say, if you can tell me where I'm going to need the gun, then I'll only carry it then. Do you get my reasoning? You know, it's like saying, getting in a car and saying, well, I'm not going to put my seatbelt on because I know exactly where the accident's going to be, and I'll put it on just before that. Well, that's not the way it works. When somebody is going to burst into a church and attack somebody, and it's not like it hasn't happened. So yes, I carry it to church. It's small, it's lightweight, I can hide it under a t-shirt. Probably more people are appalled than I'm going to church in a t-shirt. But um, So when, when you're carrying a gun in church, there are some considerations. And you don't want to carry something that's, that's big and clunks when you sit down on a wooden bench. You know, you know you're going to react to defend. I've been doing this a long time. I've been in law enforcement, Air Force, Secret Service, Air Marshal. I'm going to react. It's one of the reasons I started carrying off-duty years ago is because I realized that no matter what it is, I'm going to react. Good or bad, I'm going to react. And if you're a bank robber, if you're robbing a 7-Eleven or a convenience store that I'm in there, I'm not going to react like everybody else. And you're going to see possibly that I'm a cop. So I need that tool to defend myself. The SIG 232, it's a good gun to always carry, absolutely. Other things to consider real quick, penetration, caliber, size of the gun, concealability. Are you a bigger person like I am? I'm pretty big, I could almost conceal a shotgun. So um, holsters, women's clothes, men's clothes. Women, you have the option of maybe a handbag. Um, do, you, do, you, do you think of it as like a James Bond gun? I do not. That's only somebody your age that would say that. Uh, the question was, when I pull that gun out at the range, do people say, ooh, what's that? Uh, not normally, but people have. Um, it's shiny. It's a very reliable, made by a very reliable manufacturer. It's a good gun. It's in stainless steel. It's kind of all weather. I'm fine with 380 caliber in most situations, and uh, I'm comfortable with it, and I'm accurate with it, and I practice with it. It's, my, it's one of my tools. You know, I get that every six months a new gun comes out in a new theory. But with modern day manufacturing of 3D ammunition, I'm very comfortable with carrying it to protect myself and my family. There used to be a, an old saying back in the days of drag racing in the 50s, you run, run with your brung. So uh, I have this uh, SIG 232, I like it. I've been carrying it a long time. I shot a lot of bullets through it. I'm comfortable with it.